Hey people, Anthony, 4 before Diesel Sundays. We're gonna do some washing machine repairs. The washing is starting to pile up, and this is the video you're gonna watch if you wanna change the seal on a front-loading washing machine. This happens to be, I'm gonna give you the info I've got in front of me, Bosch Siri 8. Oh, no, what, it's not a series, well, it has got an S there. And it's made in Germany, so get the quality, and you will still need to replace this seal because it's damaged, okay? So watch out when you buy quality because it doesn't always work out. In my opinion, stick with the top load of it. Everyone's got an opinion. Anyway, here we go. We're going to get this apart. These are the things you're going to need. Probably a Phillips head because usually you need a Phillips head to pull most things apart. So we've got the trusty Ryobi brushless. Of course, a longer uh, Phillips head bit as well, PH2. Flat blade that's not... Whoa, drop that one. Assistant, please. Thank you. That's not sharp on the edges in case you need to pry something, but you don't want to you know, damage the seal. <coughs> For this spring retainer on the seal, you can either... This is a T20 driver, which either goes in the center there. You can either use that or you could use a seven millimeter socket which goes on the top or either the other side would be quarter or something like that anyway first thing we want to do what do we need to do first take, take the top off okay let's get rid of all this stuff and we're going to take some screws i think off the top that are at the back here one there and one there that looks like the t20s as well so we'll use that tool for those t20 it's going to take those screws out of each side they look nice and short hard to get to you know phillips said would have been good to be honest but anyway it's out, but it's not out. Anyway, that's what they look like. Two of those. We'll go to the other side. I reckon cut. Anyway, they don't, they don't need to watch me take screws. Once you those two back screws out, they should just slide backwards like that. It might just lift off. Look at that. Magic. I'll discard that. Throw that in the bin. We don't need that anymore. Cut. Okay, so I've just moved the machine back a little bit to give myself a little bit more room at the front because I want to remove this seal as a retainer. There's a spring on the front, so that flat blade. Not too worried about the old seal, but I just want to kind of get in there and get around this spring and pull that out. That's what retains the seal. There's a new one that comes with a new seal. We'll just drop that there for now. Then pull this off. It's all pretty straightforward stuff, right? Pull this off, right? And we're just going to push it in out of the way because we want to remove the front cover and this is connecting the inner and the outer together at this stage, but it's the inner that we need to change. And it's just, look, there might be even ways, if you're really handy, you could probably do it without pulling the front cover off. Oh, okay, no, this, see, this is where it's gonna have that uh, tube up there, yeah, right. So if I pull that hard enough, that'll probably come off, but I've got to get down there and have a look, so. What we're gonna do, there is, I think there's a, a little birdie told me, there's a hose that connects up here, there's a clamp or something, so. I'm not going to uh, just rip this out. We're just going to tuck that. I'm not too worried about it at the moment. It's disconnected from this front cover. I don't care if it's in or out or whatever. Now what I'm going to do is take this cover out because it makes sense for that. And now what, when I get this out, I have to press that or something to release yeah. it, I think. Yeah, there we go. Get that out of the way. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Now I'm going to look around. There's going to be some screws here. There might be some screws there. There might be screws at the bottom. I'm going to go and have a look for some screws. When I find them, I'll show you where they're at. I made a bit of a mistake at the start because I grabbed all those Phillips heads thinking, you know, that's what you use. But the thing is, what I should have grabbed is a T20 bit and I could have put on the drive and just gone zoot, zoot, zoot. But anyway, here we go. There's three screws here on this machine. I'm going to take those out. So what I've done, since this was, you tuck it and it flops back out because of the clamp, I've just pushed it past the edge so that I can close the door because I want to get the door out of the way. All right, here we go. Captain... What's going on here? Let's get this off. I don't think this has ever been off before. Yeah, I took it off the other day. Did you? Yeah. Well, no, it must be you. What did you do? Yeah, not me. Go on. There you go. No, so it doesn't come off. Okay, you got to fold it down. Okay, there you go. See? That's why sometimes on the inside jobs in the house, the wife is better at doing the repairs than the man. So the girls do inside and the boys do outside. Wouldn't that be it? That sounds reasonable, doesn't it? You know, we're up on the roof. Fixing, cleaning the gutters, mowing the lawn, fixing the fence. I don't know. What do we got there? Is that it? Just two screws? Oh, there's another one there, but I don't think we need to take that one out because we just want to... This cover. So it's not going to move yet. No, nothing. Have a 30 second look around and I believe that these clips might have to be lifted up or something like that to pull the front cover out. I could be wrong. I haven't done this before. I'm not a washing machine repair person. I'm just, you know, a common sense kind of guy, but 
you know, washing machines aren't necessarily that common and those clips are out and it feels like something's really retaining it here still. So, oh, hang on, there's another screw there. That screw, no, we're not taking that panel out though. All right, cut so I can Just in here, there's some more clips and things. What I've done, I've just put my finger on, I think the bottom one's just a guide and the top one, there's see the bottom one. I think this is the clip here, right? What do you reckon, mate? What do you reckon, mate? What do you reckon? Right. This is what I think. I think there's one more clip down there. So it's this one at the side and then that one there. It's going to be difficult for me to get in there. So we're going to cut and I'm going to release that and see if it works. Okay, doing this, I actually just figured out I probably don't have to pull the front off this one. Although it'll make it easier, I'm going to continue just for the challenge. Um, or then again, I might not. I might try and do it a different way because now that we've got the top off, shush up you. Let me do it my way. And he's trying to tell me how to do it. Okay. Oh, don't. Right. I reckon we can take that clamp off. We can get to the spring from in here. We can let the spring sit over it down here and easily get that off and on. But I could be wrong. So I don't know whether I should continue pulling the front off or remove that out of there anyway. I reckon let's remove it anyway, just because I reckon we can. Right. So what I decided is I've got in here with the pliers. Remove this clamp down here. See that? and pulled the hose off, right? Because it's, you know, just down here. And now I'm starting to remove this spring because I figure we might as well give it a go changing it without taking the front off, although this is more difficult to get to, but it could save the whole process of pulling the front off. So I want to find out to see if we have to take the front off. So just still in the process. Hey, don't bite me on the ear. What are you doing? Hey, my ear, don't. Unbelievable, bloody parrots. So basically need to pull this retaining seal off. The replacement one we've got. Yeah, shush up. This seal, I'm trying, I've got my fingers underneath here, trying to pull it off on the inside, and it's really difficult to get off. Actually, this is there. Yeah, it's probably maybe, is it gonna come off from the outside first? Or I don't know. Let's do that. Let's do that, just try and get that in there to open it up so I can get a finger in there. Fingers are always best because, you know, hey, shush up. All right, so that's where all that should come out the front here. That's how to destroy a washing machine and get the seal out without taking the front off. Assuming there's nothing else connected at the moment. Right. There's the old seal. There's the retaining ring. Now what we're going to do now that we've got it out, I'm just going to tap all those clips back in, right? And I might have to pull it off, but um, I reckon we won't have to pull the front off. That's one way to do it. I don't know what the workshop manual says. This is four before diesel Sundays. We figure things out. So what I'm going to do now is Make sure the new seal looks the same as that and make sure it looks correct because it's not looking too good. But anyway, let's see. All right, so when this goes back on, there's these three drain holes at the bottom, we're gonna line up with that and see these two indent things here. See inside the bottom of the rubber seal, they have to sit like that. So the first thing I wanna do is sit that in there. And some people say to use soap or water or whatever to uh, lube it up. I'm not gonna do that because my experience, you put too much lube and then can make things leak whatever later as well. So I'm just gonna go, you know what? I'm gonna try it dry and gently work my way to the top. It's just a bit of rubber. Surely we can get it on. There's harder things in life. If we have trouble, then we'll put soap. And then if what you're watching me do it, it's just gonna get messy. You're not gonna see anything anyway. So that's what I'm doing. So what I've done so far is, as I said, three holes at the bottom. If we get the camera right down low here, you might even be able to look through those holes there and see if they're lining up or not. It doesn't look like anything's lining up at the moment, does it? Yeah. So that's not really a good look, but um, yeah. is it? Can you see here? Oh yeah, lower. <clears throat> oh yeah, there they are, all right. But the thing is those two tabs, because you can't see them. So what I did, I'm just pressing going, it feels right. And I'm looking going dead set level at the bottom, those holes are lined up and it's flush. So that was easy. Now I've just got to work my way up the sides with a seal. I don't think it's going to be hard at all. So just working our way around, I reckon it must be just about there, is it? Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Is it all the way on? One more bit. One more bit. A bit going down a bit. 
Yeah, it's pretty difficult working with a cover on, but you know, there is definitely a bit around this side that needs that needs help. And you've got this big seal in your way, so yeah, kind of. I don't know if I showed you the right way or the wrong way to do this, but definitely showed you working, still working on a way to do this. The way you can fill in your Sundays. I'm not quite getting that on, am I? Bit over there needs a good. So I'm just going to go around the whole thing now and feel all the way around and make sure. So, cut. Well, I'm not doing anything at the moment, actually. Sorry, mate. Sorry about that. It's just a clamp. All right, so same way as what it was. Just want to sit this if I can. Pliers maybe not the best thing for the job. And I don't want to over squat. I'm just sitting it in place. Probably don't even need to squash it too much to get it on. Probably don't need to squash it all, right? So just put the pliers down because we're not actually putting it on. I just want to put this in place all the way down the seal so that we can put the the spring seal over the top of the boot to get that back on if we can without pulling the front off. At the end of this video, we might pull the front off anyway, just because I'm curious, but then I can say I did it without pulling the front off, but it would be much easier if you pulled the front off because this is a learning video for all of us. All right, just for fun and games, we decided we're going to take the front off. This one I can't find, I can probably unplug that, but I'm not going to bother unplugging the wiring loop because I can't find a plug anywhere nearby. So we're just going to sit that carefully up on top so we're not yanking on the wire and so that it doesn't fall. We don't want to, we're trying to fix things, not break things. And you can see access to a couple more screws. I'm going to remove those and then it might come out or slide up or down. So I'll get those out. Okay, so I've taken these two, two top screws out now. <laughs> now nothing's still that. Now what's stopping it coming out? I think, oh, there's the screws on the bottom. We've got to tilt it up as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So let's do that. Yep, screws underneath. And it would have been good if we obviously took these ones out. So tilt the machine. All right, tilt the machine and take the screws out of the bottom first. Anyway, I'm going to take that one out. And there's that one. I'm going to take those yeah, out. We've taken those screws off. The front's ready to come off. So it was so easy to take it off. Definitely remove that. But you're going to have other things to unplug down here now as well. There's a... A dipstick for checking the oil. No, it's not a dipstick for checking the oil, but we've got to get in here without damaging these wires and unplug these sensors, right? So, so what we want to do now is disconnect this plug carefully, not one that I'm familiar with. Hardly even get a hand in there, but I'll get in there and it's probably something to do with this tab here, or there could be something behind it. And um, that'll unplug. I think we've got to lift that out. Somehow a little um, pick would be good to lift that out, I think. Let me see and figure it out. Right, as you can see, it was even easier than working on Toyotas when you think about it. So you press that there, and that opens up and that slides off. This dipstick here for changing the oil, make sure that goes back in the hole correctly when you put it back together. We'll get to that. But now we've got the front off, so let's get rid of it out of the way. And look how much easier that is to work on. Definitely should have done it the easy way, but it wasn't that hard and it was a challenge and we like a challenge. So now it's time to get the uh, retaining ring back on. We'll just make sure this rubber's pushed all the way on, all the way around, which you can already see that it is. But you don't want to get this wrong or you're going to have a leak. So you've got to make sure it's all the way on. So next time, just pull the uh, front off 100%. All right, so this is a bit of a conundrum. The, the new one that came with it, it's got the adjuster on it, right? Which I've never seen anything like it. Well, I'm not a washing machine repairman, so of course I haven't. And then you've got the automatic spring one. So do you use the old one? There's no wrong answer here, but this is the conundrum. Do you use the old one that's self-tensioning? Because that's going to have the perfect amount of tension, right? Or do you use the new one that you've got to uh, adjust it and hopefully you get it right? Okay, so the answer's simple. That spring one, you can get it on. But you know what? It's a pain in the you-know-what. And I don't want to do a pain in the you-know-what. So I'm going to... So it's, this one sits over, I'm guessing, I haven't got the uh, owner's manual with me, but I'm guessing that you probably got to go all the way. So I'm going to try this one, and if it doesn't seem tight enough, we'll be doing the other one anyway, because see what's happening here? It doesn't look like it's going to be the right... Uh, it might just come... Like I said, it might just need to be... It's going to go around and make sure it's still sitting 100% in position. 
because there is a groove there it's got to sit in. I'm starting to think the design is you go all the way and that's that. Now I'm just having my hair wrong one. <laughs> Where'd the other one go? <laughs> okay. As long as it doesn't hit there, I'll try to give myself enough room for the driver. Yeah, it's starting to feel like that's going to be it. Well, you want to get in and have a look? Show us how it's done. What do you reckon? Have a look. Have a look. Is it? Okay. Well, bloody Sundays, mate. You know, you want to be the Sunday instructor. So I'm going to go all the way. It's just about hitting there. That's a bit of a pain, though. I feel like I want to cut that off or something, you know? I don't think there's going to be any such thing as that. That's about as far as it wants to go anyway. And I reckon that's tight. I reckon that's that done. Then we'll move over to here. We'll pop this clamp back on. You can see there's a little locator there. If you have trouble getting anything on, I've done it dry, no problem. But, you know, you can use some molly coat. No, you can use some whatever you want. You know, people talk about where those pliers go. What I've done, I just made sure I pulled the rubber up the back, otherwise with it down it was a bit kinked and sort of choking it around the throat here and you don't want the stuff to not come down, so make sure you've got the back pulled up properly, don't rush through this job, take it nice and slow. I'm just going to put this clamp back on if these pliers let me do that. So I said, I was having trouble with it slipping before, that's why I said if it lets me. Oh God. You need some special tool just to work on a washing machine. Come on, come on, come on, come on, I just want to get just enough grip. A little bit more there you go i squashed it all the way so make sure you get that in the right spot so that it's definitely on yeah i reckon that's it i don't think that's gonna leak yet beautiful positioning bit of practice on radiator hoses helps so it seems thin there but i think that's just the way it goes because it goes flat there all right it's back in it doesn't get twisted up because it could get jammed in there that could be a problem and you'll be pulling it apart again um, just carefully with the plug i need to bring the door closer so i'm just gonna don't move it around we're just gonna Bring it around, plug it in. We're going to put the two screws back in the top of the door and the two screws in the bottom. Reverse order is what we pulled it apart. Remember the, the ones at the top? Yeah, so I'm just making sure that's nice and square. Then hopefully this wire, I'm lifting the door ready to get that to reach. Yep, that's clicked in. Now I need to, I've got a screwdriver down there in the way. Bugger. Get that out of the way because we need to this around into position there's some locating clips for the height so what i'm doing now i'm trying to figure out so all i've done i put the front i put the top two screws in put two screws in here i've still got to tip it up to put the bottom two in but that doesn't just sit like that does it and the ring goes onto there no nah, maybe i feel like i've got to tuck this in somewhere but that yeah. looks that looks right mm -hmm. i would just get you to tell me how to do it you know what i mean like that's not how it goes is it so this has got to go obviously half in half out like that or something mm -hmm. yeah no, that, that whole thing the whole, comes over. The whole thing does come over. Because okay. the ring. Bro, well, let me do that then. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. Cause it's, see, that's what I said. You need the, uh, definitely need the wife on the job. This is not a one-man job. Apparently, it's not a one-woman job. It's a team effort for the uh, washing machine repair jobs on Sundays or Saturdays, whenever you're doing it. Or after, if you want to wash your clothes, you might be doing it any day of the week. And beware, because, you know, it's just getting harder and harder to get people. So I obviously don't know what I'm doing here. Do you like, is it people, are you like the people in the video and you just wish you could get in here and have a go at this because he's doing it wrong? Because that's how I feel. I feel that everybody else could do this. I'm not very good at getting this seal on here at the moment. It just doesn't want to, I don't know how it goes. It's just such a simple thing. I'm, maybe I'm better at doing harder things. This is just too fiddly. What is going on there? I think we're getting there slowly, but it's not hard. It's just, um, yeah. Anyway, let's not bore them any longer. Let's go time lapse. Uh, a lot of fumbling and mucking around, but we got it on by hand in the end and extra hand helps. Get one person to hold there while the other person works their way around and it gets, yeah, you weren't much help at all, mate. Ah, stop chewing on my ear. Um, 
once you get around to here, it gets a bit difficult. And of course, you don't want to damage the new seal. That's the whole point. We changed it because it got damaged. Look. Whatever got jammed left in here, whatever. What's wrong? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's a bit. Oh, yeah. So we'll sort that out. I don't think that won't matter, but we'll flatten that out as well. We'll get that. So that's what I mean. So we've got to still go around, make sure this is 100%. It looks right, but we've got to just make sure because if it's not in right at one spot, then you're going to have problems. So we're just going to double check this. Then the screws go back in the bottom. The cover goes on here. Throw the front on, throw the lid on. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, bloody long video. Hey, you got a nice short video on how to change the seal? Well, they're the ones that aren't going to help people too much because you didn't teach them anything. What we're doing is showing you what really happens. Quick little tweak and uh, we got that rubber out, just gently lifted the spring out and popped it out. So back together she goes, finally. Like I said, uh, T20 Torx bit on a driver would be quicker than mm -hmm. using a screwdriver. So remember on this machine, don't assume it's Phillips heads, Phillips heads on uh, on these, over to this side, same thing. Sorry, what was that you just said? The moral of the story is not to jam your clothes in the door and start your wash cycle without checking first because that's what's damaged the seal. Oh wait, this guy, I'm about to damage the cover in a minute. So I, I should let you do it. Oh, do it. Gee, you're lucky you're here, I tell you, really? It just doesn't, it just feels. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, that's what I mean, teamwork, eh? Hang on, don't force it. That's not, you just said that's not right. Let's see, see, I can't do this, so while you're holding the machine up on an angle, <laughs> I'll just be the cameraman. We'll get the good camera work happening now. Look, 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 here we go. Yeah, beautiful, there we go. Happy days. All right, let's lower that down again. Thank you. See, teamwork, this just pops in. So your clips are basically one, two, three, four. Gently hold them out while you come around. There's one at the side. There's a couple sitting at the bottom. You can try and press those up a little bit, but we sort of think that the front is kind of meant to lift up after that. But, you know, it just eventually with a bit of manhandling, it pops out. It's a bit of a, to be honest, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, but, you know, I don't really know the official. Somebody that's done a hundred of them, maybe they've got a video. And they can show in detail, like this video is a detailed video. So now just whack the lid on and you're done. No! There's three screws to go in the front here, remember? So let's whack those back in. The stainless steel ones we kept separate, that's right. Stainless. Special stainless. Should have done up those three screws. Hopefully this thing. Oh, what a job. That's it. Now we're just going to put the top on, give it a bit of a clean up and... Test run, all right, let's see the top. Here's the lid, I reckon it just sits on and yeah, slides in and two screws in the back. Now you check for leftover nuts and bolts or mainly screws. Remember the T20, handy tool that. Anyway, I've had that for about 30 years. I used to use it for radio removal tool is what we used to call it. Um, yeah, T20, HR, security bit with a hole in it, H for hole, hey, relax you. Anyway, thanks to Tango for uh, those little uh, little birdie told me things. And uh, thanks to the wife for jamming the clothes in the mm -hmm. seal mm -hmm. so that I can have experience mm -hmm. and on a washing machine, Bosch washing machine, and, uh, you seal. know, uh, make a video. What else better do we have to do on Sundays? All right, let's pack this up, give it a test run. What are we meant to do? Let's go shopping. All right, thanks for watching, people. Hope you learned something. Hope it helped someone. There's a lot of information in this video. That's because it probably went for ages and we showed you a lot of things rather than a quick, imagine a quick time lapse or a three minute video where we just bang, 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 done. You'd be going, whoa, how do you do that? Is it, this is where this video is good because we have no idea what's going on and the job's done. Bada bing, bada boom. Thanks for watching. See ya.